Alrighty, so we got ourselves a fun little Christmas special this year. Uh, Minnesota will be traveling to the 10-4 and 4 Saints. Uh, Minnesota comes in at 6-8. and eight. Uh, Anyway, offensively, the Saints are 16th in total offense, averaging 363.8 yards per game, 17th in yards per play at 5.6, 21st in passing yards at 232, Whew, excuse me, 12th in sacks allowed at 27, and 13th in sack percentage at 5.5. 7th in rushing yards at 138, well, whoa, 131.8 yards per game. 12th in yards per carry at 4.4. And they run at a fair bit amount of time. 7th uh, in attempts per game at 29.9. They're 9th in the NFL on 3rd downs at 44.3%. They're 7th in red zone 69.6%. And 9th in points per game at 28.4. Defensively, they're a much stronger team on defense. And... For the Saints, that might be a little odd for some people to hear. But defensively, they have third in total defense, 306.4 yards per game allowed. Third in yards per play at 4.9. Fifth in passing yards at 210.9. Sixth in sack percentage at 7.7%. And fourth in pressure percentage at 26.3%. They're fourth in rushing yards allowed at 95.6. Third in yards per carry allowed at 3.8. And they are 26th in attempts per game at 25.2 so not many teams stick with the run on them and they're 11th and third down 39.7 percent however 29th in the red zone at 68.3 percent and sixth in points per game allowed at 21.2 their injury report um you got Traquan Smith he's out he's a receiver uh, out with a groin Nick Easton Viking fans will be com- you know familiar with Nick Easton an interior offensive lineman play some guard play some center He's out due to a concussion. Marcus Williams out with an ankle. Andres Pete is questionable with an ankle. Malcolm Brown questionable with a calf. And Hendrickson is questionable with a neck. And if Hendrickson or Pete can't go, if either one or both, that's actually kind of huge. Hendrickson has had quietly a very good season. And Andres Pete, um, he's a starting guard. So with Nick Easton out. If he can't go, that would be a problem, but I assume Andres Pete will be a go. And the only thing that would make me question Hendrickson is the fact that it is a neck injury. You don't really want to mess around with those. Um, Minnesota, offensively, they are fifth in total offense at 387.1, fourth in yards per play at 6.1, 18th in passing yards at 239.4, 21st in sacks allowed, though, at 34, and 23rd in sack percentage at 7.2%. Fifth in rushing yards at 147.7. Fourth in yards per carry at 4.9 yards a pop there. And they're also running it a lot. Sixth in attempts per game at an even 30. They're 16th in third down percentage, 42.1%. Red zone, they are fifth, 70.8%. And 14th in points per game at 25.7. Now, defensively is where this team really, really struggles. Um... They're 23rd in total defense, allowing 378 yards per game. They're 26th in yards per play at 5.8. 24th in passing yards at 252.4. 26th in sack percentage at 4.4. 27th in pressure percentage at 19.2. Um, 24th in rushing yards allowed at 125.6. 12th in yards per carry, though, at 4.3. 7th in attempts per game at 28.9. So teams tend to run on them quite a bit. Uh... Ninth and third downs, 38%. Fifth and red zone at 53.1%. And they are 25th in points per game at 27.7 points allowed per game. Now, Minnesota's injury report is kind of rough. Um, Jalen Holmes out with a groin. Troy Dye, uh, rookie linebacker, out with a hamstring and a concussion. Alexander Madison uh, was out due to the appendix surgery a little bit. Now he's out with a concussion. Eric Hendricks still out with a calf. Kyle Rudolph still out with a foot. And then Todd Davis is doubtful, another linebacker with rib injuries. So, and then you have CJ Ham questionable with a quadriceps injury, and Armand Watts also questionable with an ankle. So, mm, took a pretty rough hit there. Now, what do I think has to happen for them to actually win this game? Well, offensively, I'm not actually going to rule them out on being able to run the football, even though it looks like 
Defensively, you know, Saints pretty stout against running of the football. But they did come into Tampa Bay, and they ran for 162 yards and 4.9 yards a carry. And coming into that game, Tampa Bay was first in rush defense. And they had very similar numbers to this. So I'm not going to necessarily rule out being able to run the football, but I'm not expecting that kind of success. That's kind of ridiculous. But I do think overall they will need to resort to quick passing because they can rush. They have Cam Jordan. They have Trey Hendrickson. They have some guys. We have Dakota Dozier at left guard. That's a problem. How do you nullify that? Quick passing and... You know, you get Kirk on these design rollouts and you move the pocket and the launch point, assuming you can run the football just a little bit, at least enough to keep them honest. If you can do those things, you have a chance of some offensive consistency or at least maybe finding a big play a couple times in this game. Um, You can't really turn the ball over this game. I don't think they'll be able to recover and... It's not necessarily because I think their offense has been lighting it up lately, but I know for a fact this defense is not equipped to really play an NFL game, and they kind of have to play that way, which means you may have to be a little bit more conservative than you like to be. However, don't be as predictable. Um, Just because you have to go maybe a little bit more conservative because of how things are on the team, what's available to you, what's not available to you, how things are there on the injury or the COVID or the IR, whatever it is, any of those lists, doesn't necessarily mean you have to be predictable. It just means you have to be high percentage. So I'm hoping that just means a little bit of difference every once in a while. Maybe don't run on second and 10 every time. (laughs) Um... Defensively, um, I would want them to sell out for the run. After I saw the Bears run for 199 yards, now they face Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray, and Taysom Hill. They may run for 700 yards. That's what it feels like. And you kind of have to sell out for that run. Now, when they have to pass, (laughs) um, you need to try to force Breeze to actually chuck that ball deep. Um... He kind of he lives on these timing routes, these shorter routes, kind of short to intermediate. You got to force him to throw it 20, 30 yards down the field. That's when you can get him out of a comfort zone. And they don't have any Thomas or Traquan Smith, so task gets a tad bit easier. Although they still do have Emmanuel Sanders and Alvin Kamara is obviously an issue in the passing game. And then don't forget about Jared Cook. Jared Cook is a very good tight end in this league. He can hurt you vertically down the field. And you're going to have to try to get after Breeze. Um, he is a pocket guy, so you got to rattle him by hitting him. And since Minnesota can't pressure quarterbacks to their front four, that means you've got to blitz more, which means 22. 22 a lot. Um, I would just say stay aggressive with it, and it's probably going to burn you a few times, yes, but at the same time, I would rather get burned by that than just letting him have all day in the pocket, just being able to dissect the the young secondary back there. So, yeah. And they need to, you know, force turnovers and also just negative plays in general because I think you need to put them in a position where they must get chunk plays. Chunk plays have never really been the Saints' forte. That's never really what they've been built around. But if you can force them to get chunk plays, that means you're probably playing pretty well on defense. And if you can put him in that situation that's at least favorable and you've got a chance to do something, who knows? But my overall prediction here, I have New Orleans winning 34-24. to um, Overall, I just don't trust this defense to stop this running game. Um, if they're able to run that clock, they'll eat the clock, and that'll force Minnesota to be more of a drop-back team, and then we all know what happens. They have a rush. Minnesota can't protect Kirk adequately, and then I still put a large portion on that on a starting left guard in Dakota Dozier. Um, He misses a lot of assignments, particularly on stunts. That's kind of his biggest issue I think I've seen with him this year. He doesn't know how to pick up a stunt at all, and he's just not athletic enough. He's not aware enough at times, it feels like, and every 
five plays, it feels like he's just pushed back into Kirk's lap. It's like, I just, he's not good, and it's a problem, and Cam Jordan's going to have fun with him. And they may be able to stall their passing game a bit, but overall, like, if they're able to run the ball, like, I think they could. I'm not sure it matters, because they could be getting five to five and a half yards per carry, and at that point, who cares what you're getting in the passing game? Just run the ball. So, offensively, they will have problems, like I said, with the pass rush, which means you have to be able to run the football, and with how good they are against the run, like I said before, I don't think they'll necessarily be getting 160 to 165 yards on this defense like they did Tampa Bay, but who knows? It kind of, once again, relies all on, well, are you going to be one-dimensional? Because if you're one-dimensional, you don't have the offensive line to protect Kirk Cousins. And that's kind of been a running theme the last couple of years here. Um, I would like to know your guys' comments down below. All the thoughts, all the good stuff. Um, like and subscribing. Super helpful. And until next time, I bid you all adieu.